Bye. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. So look, look, here I come. In three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. Bye. Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Look. My name's Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. Ha. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. in the multiverse. Bang! And you're about to witness some greatness. Bang! We have a great show for you today. All right. <laughs> yeah, I came all serious with that shit. Yuck! About to witness the greatness. About to witness the on greatness. See how it goes. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, guys. Hope you all have a great night. Have a good time. Look, look, over there in Jersey. Shout outs to our brother Edwin. Edwin! Fuck, dog. That shit looks fucked up. So I hope your house is all right, because I saw that fucking flooding. Yeesh. All right, brother. You know I love you. Bye. Anyways, I'm not too worried about you. You got all this crypto money. You could buy yourself a couple more houses. <laughs> buy yourself a couple more houses. Fuck this one. I'll go buy a couple more. Look. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. All right. Now let's get to the channel. Uh, I mean, the, the day show. Look. All right. Cardano. Wait. What? Oh, yeah, this is the shit I was talking to you about. Right, right, right. I told you people are loading up on Cardano right now. So Cardano is a favorite amongst retailers and institutions. So we're going to read about that. And then, oh, this is the story from Binium. Thank you, Binium, uh, from yesterday. FTX US crypto exchange gets a CFTC license. So a licensed regulated exchange. We're going to read about that. And then, okay, and so this fuck stick here, you know the guy, uh, Lukashenko. So remember I read you about Lukashenko a couple days ago? He was telling his citizens like, yeah, man, you know, don't go to Germany and work. Just mine some crypto, right? Yeah, well, now he's like, we want the government to mine some crypto. Exactly. The fuck y'all been waiting for? All right, so we'll get, you know I'm going to yap when we get there, dag on dag. God. And then we're going to do the shout-outs and daily summary as usual. So let's begin how we begin. Bye. Because <laughs> I'll start preaching about Lukashenko right now. Look. He's a motherfucker. But that guy. Good idea. All right. Let's do a little. And you know how we do? We do a bang. And then we do a little bit of bang. Refresh. Oh, look at us. About 50 grand on the Bitcoin. <laughs> $50,014. All right. Uh-huh. $50,014. Look, when I left you yesterday, we were at $47,753, so we have gone up. Uh, what's this? Two $2,261. All right, price of Bitcoin has gone up $2,261. Bye. Nice. Whoops. All right, let's see uh, top 10 of the day, brothers and sisters. You know who they are. The usual on bunch of miscreants. Look, top 10. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Binance Coin, Tether, XRP, Dogecoin, Solana, Polkadot, and USD Coin. Look at Solana all the way up at number eight. All right, uh, let's look at the market moves of the day. Sickle digits up, sickle digits down. Oh, hey, hold on. Let me get myself right here. Okay, so. uh, pair ourselves here. Sickle this up, sickle this down. There we go. Sickle this up, sickle this down. Sickle this up, sickle this down. Chain link. I mean, V chain. <laughs> Sorry. You just keep doing that, homeboy. You just keep doing that right there. That right there. Just keep doing how you're doing it. <laughs> sickle this up, sickle this down. FTX token bang. Of course, they bought that company yesterday. Uh, uh, fuck, I keep. I brought it up yesterday, and, I, and I'm bringing it up today, and I can't remember what the fuck it was. I don't remember what it was. All right. Sickle this up, sickle this down. Sickle this up, sickle this down. Ooh. 
Whoa, Iota. Bang! Look at you, Kusama. Bang! It's usually Iota, 20% up today. Dang on right. What, they get a new smart city contract from the European Union? What's going on over there? Why the sudden frenzy? All right, sickle this up, sickle this down. All right, let's see you lost money today. You see anything on here you like, go get it because, bang, it's on sale. All right, here we go. Let's check it out. Bang. Oh, okay, the market wasn't on sale today. We just got a bunch of bullshit coins right here. All right, top 10 losers. Uh, Yearn Finance, Celsius, Avalanche, OKB, Thor Chain, Perpetual Protocol, Binance USD, Day, USD Coin, and Trust USD. A bunch of stable coin crap, really. Let's see who made money. Fuck, everybody did. Bong! Yes! All right, top 10 gainers FTX token, IOTA, Revein, Kusama, Tron, Shinfin Network. Uh, v Chain, Dogecoin, and Polkadot. All right, let's see what the total market cap is. Bye! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Look, look. Look, look, brothers, sisters, folks, miscreants. Look here, fuck sticks. Market cap today is $2.292 trillion. When I left yesterday, we were at $2.188 trillion. So we've gone up, blood clot. We've gone up point one oh four, bang, trillion dollars. Look, look. Let's look at the vol. Uh, what do you call this? Twenty four hour volume. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's good news. That's good news. When the market goes up, uh, but the volume isn't too good, that means people are buying. Uh, and, uh, you know, in other words, a few people are buying a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they want it. Uh, anyway, whatever, whatever. Fuck all that. So look, because actually we went down in volume today. Uh, total volume is 128.8 in volume today. A billion dollars, billion dollars, 128.8 billion dollars. And yesterday we were at 130.1 billion dollars. So you've actually gone down. Um... Well, let's just call that $2 billion. Just call it $2 billion and keep it moving. Look. Bang. Holy, look at that market cap. Nice, nice, nice. 2.2 trillion. Let's go. Let's go. Look. Oh, yeah. Let's get this chicken. All right, boys and girls. All right, let's check out the stories. Bang. Cardano remains a favorite among retail and institutionals alike with Alonzo upgrade on schedule. And so... I told you guys, uh, well, not I told you, I read to you, we read the story here, fucking Japan, right? Fully authorized, certified, whatever you want to call it, Cardano. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And so, you know, in uh, Japan, look, brother, it, that's the hardest place, like, in the world, <laughs> you know, to be sort of, to be regulated like that, right? It's... I mean, that's that, that's some tough stuff right there. And so they did it. And so that's a signal to the market. Like, whoa, Japan approved you? Whatever's under your hood is all good. It's all good to go. You know what I mean? Like, that's the kind of attitude you take when you hear about a J Japanese uh, approval. And uh, so, yeah, institution, I told you um, that right now Cardano and Solana Institutions are buying them up like crazy. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm wondering if it's because Cardano's going to come out with smart contracts and companies know that down the road they're going to want to deploy smart contracts. And so they're figuring, well, I'm going to have to pay for it in the Cardano, kind of like Ethereum with the gas fees or something, right? And so they're thinking, well, let me buy a whole bunch of Cardano right now. Well, it's dirt cheap. Actually, hold on. Let's look at the Cardano price for one second, guys. Hold on. Let's look at that. Bah! All right, here we are. Oh, $3 now? Holy smoky smoky. Yeah. So maybe they're thinking, yeah, I want to get in on the Cardano. Well, I want to deploy something on Cardano 
And, uh, you know, let's buy it while it's cheap, all right? Because next year, eesh, it's going to cost us more to deploy. I don't know, but, yeah, that's the word on the street. That's the thing, right? The institutions are buying it up. And anyway, all right, so let me redo the word on the street. Let's go. Let's check it out. Bang, the upgrade is a... Wait, wait, wait. What? What the fuck are they talking about? Oh, upgrade. Alonzo upgrade on schedule. Right, right. So the upgrade is a major milestone for Cardano, which is in its first, or sorry, its final, not first, final, critical stage that will usher in a transformative era of smart contracts capability. Ahead of the big day, ADA is tra trading near its all-time high, targeting $3.00. As Cardano investment products saw the largest on-record inflow. Finally. Exactly. This is the problem with Cardano, right? It's finally. After years of development, Cardano was all <laughs> set to have smart contracts. And you, you want to ask yourself, well, there's other things that have smart contracts. Yeah, you know, and, and, but you, you want to pair it with the Japanese thing. Uh, why is Cardano, why is Cardano approved and no one else? All right, all right. Something going on with their system, obviously, that is favorable, right? Well, you know, it's the fat F, you know, that Cardano did this thing. Oh, I should mention that, yeah. So Cardano did this thing the other day where they, they uh, partnered with some company and the, the Cardano people, they don't like it, right? Because it's going to report um, money laundering and uh, terrorist financing stuff, right? So Cardano is actually Fat F compliant. Fat F, F A T F, is the Financial Action Task Force. Right? The Financial Action Task Force is a global body that has made every economy in the world um, sort of tune their economies. In a way, let me let me just say this in a way, sort of tune their economies to make sure that there is no terrorist financing or money laundering, right? Uh, well, and some other other things, but those are the two main bah, that apply to us in the crypto world, right? And so, uh, you know, Cardano is now becoming fat F compliant, and so that means if I'm a if I'm a if I'm a a hedge fund master or uh, something like that. Um, and I hold a list. Wow, yeah, I'm regulatory compliant. There's no problem to hold Cardano. It's Fat F compliant, motherfucker, right? So, and I want you to understand, Fat F, Financial Action Task Force. Every economy in the world has to be compliant. Yeah, yeah, even America, everybody, all of us. Iran is Fat F compliant. Russia is Fat F compliant. Motherfucker, the only the only country in the world that's not Fat F compliant is is uh, North Korea. And this one country in Africa, I don't remember what it is. Yeah, we all are. The whole world, that's the regime we live under now. A global regime. Fat F compliance to stop money laundering. In other words, catch criminals, right? Because the only people who need to the only people who need to launder money are criminals. So to stop the uh, money laundering and obviously terrorist financing. Yeah, well, wars cost money. You think that terrorist shit is free? Right, like like uh, the Taliban, right? That just took over Afghanistan. Yeah, well, you got to pay those fighters, right? The Taliban, the, the jihadis, you got to pay them, right? You got to feed them. Yeah, they have a wife and kid at home, motherfucker. You got to pay them so they can send money back to the wife and kid. You know what I mean? They're not just jihadin' for nothing. You know, it's not a volunteer mission. <laughs> you know, it's not like saving the whales, a volunteer thing. No, you got to pay them. I mean, most of those jihadis, that's the reason they become jihadis, because they come from some fuck shit little village. There's no work. And the Taliban comes along and says, all right, look, we'll give you a couple hundred bucks to shoot at some Americans. They go, all right, fuck it, fuck it, fine. Right? So wars cost money. And so you got to stop the money. If a jihadi group doesn't have the money to pay their people, well, the people will go do something else. Uh, obviously, you got to feed your family, right? And especially, you know, in the Islamic community, you know, a man is judged by how good his wife and children are taken care of. You know what I'm saying? I guess in every 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 country, every society, right? But it's a big thing over there. Like if your wife complains about you, 
Uh, my husband, you know, he just keeps bringing home blah blah blah, you know, whatever she complains about you. It's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, in your village, you know, people look down on you, you know. So you gotta keep your wife happy. Uh, why are we talking about that? Oh, anyway, so uh, fuck that. So sorry, sorry, guys. We went, we went way too deep into jihadi and Islamic culture there. Let's step the fuck back. Let's step back here now. And uh, yeah, terrorist financing. Yeah, wars cost money, as I've told you before. And uh, so you have to stop terrorist financing. And that's where Fat F comes in. All right, let's get back to Fat F now. Right? Terrorist financing and money laundering. Terrorist financing obviously takes away their money to do their jihad. And money laundering, well, that's all the other miscreants out there. <laughs> all the other cartels and uh syndicates and miscreant uh just groups out there organizations out there doing miscreant stuff all right fuck dag on sorry about that let's move on look so say talking about talking about the much anticipated alonzo upgrade in a recent vlog cardano founder who also co-founded ethereum charles hoskinson said Everything is green and go. We're on schedule. Bye. The Alonzo hard fork is a major upgrade for the third largest network with its full capabilities, including the implementation of smart contracts functionality. Bye. This functionality will allow anyone to deploy their own smart contracts on the blockchain, paving the way for Cardano native decentralized applications. Alonzo's activation will also mean the end of the Shelley era. Oh, the end of the Shelley era. <laughs> Just kidding. Shelly, that was my favorite upgrade. Yeah, you know why? Bang! Quantum proof. That's the other thing about Cardano. It's quantum proof. You know, we're going to have these new computers coming out soon. Quantum computing. Yeah, yeah, they're going to they're going to they're going to they're going to fucking tear through these blockchains like a hot knife through butter. Yeah, once the once the Chinese and the Russians get their hands on them, lock lock your blockchain ain't safe, fuckstick. Your blockchain ain't safe. I don't give a fuck how many transactions it has. Your blockchain ain't safe. And so, uh, yeah, that's the beauty of Shelly. Bye. And marking the beginning of the Goguen phase. But meaning that Cardano right now is <clears throat> quantum proof. IOTA is quantum proof. Duh, that's why the European Union is using them in all a bunch of smart city stuff. And now Cardano is quantum proof. And so um, when you're thinking ahead, when you're an organization or you're a government you know, you're a, a city or a state or the federal government, whatever. Uh, you want to deploy technology that's going to last. You know what I mean? That's going to last, right? Uh, you know, let's get real. These are government stuff and let's get real. You know, every government is hacking every other government. And so you want something that's unhackable. Quantum proof is the solution. And uh, Cardano is quantum proof. Cardano and IOTA. I think there's a couple other ones out here that are quantum proof as well, but yeah, all the rest of these blockchains, shit. They better get quantum proofed or they're going to get tore the fuck up when that shit comes out. All right, so look. In its monthly update, <clears throat> IOHK shared that Cardano testnet is primed for release for the 1st of September. Oh, which was yesterday, actually. Though, this is not without risk. As there could be a severe, because now I am late, so now it's the 2nd of September. Uh, as there could be a severe unexpected issue, which might push it out. But with all known things that we know right now, we remain on track. So this major milestone for Cardano is basically in its final critical stage. That will usher in a transformative era of smart tracks comp capability during the surprise ask me anything on monday hoskinson also explained that 25 stakeholders went through a checklist of things and everything kept coming up green as such the team is now ready to pick the main net candidate to begin the process of gradual upgrade we're going to initiate an hfc hard fork combination event on the test nets and uh, hoskinson test net will be in the alonzo stage blah 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 some tweet Ahead of this upgrade, ADA is rallying. Just a week back, ADA 
hit a new peak of $2.95 and is currently trading at $2.80, making it worth $89.9 billion. Hold on. Let's look at the, let's just look at this for a second. Oh, it's at $3.04 now. All right. I uh, just wanted to check the current price, guys. Well, I wanted to show you the current price. Look, so look. Um, <clears throat> While retail has been piling into 88 for some time now, institutions have also taken a liking to it. According to uh, CoinShares report last week, Bitcoin had outflows for the eighth consecutive week, totaling 3.8 million, while Cardano saw inflows totaling 10.1 million, the largest on record that brings its market share to 0.15%. Meanwhile, the leading network with smart contracts functionality, Ethereum, represents 32% of the total digital asset assets under management, seeing 17 million inflows last week. Other competitors, Polkadot, Solana also recorded 1.5 million and 2.7 million in inflows. On Monday, Hoskinson praised Solana, which continues to rally to new peaks. On its success, tweeting, Solana, you guys seem to be making waves. Congratulations. Where can I learn more? All right, there it is. Bang! So there it is. Cardano. Uh, yeah, their, their, new, their new upgrade. Uh, Personally, I don't really think it's the upgrade because uh, these things upgrade a lot. What I think is the Japanese, huh, the Japanese uh, sort of thumbs up. That's what gave it the uh, the love. That's why people are buying that chicken right there because, um, well, it's working product and you got Japanese approval. If you're approved in Japan, you're gonna get approved everywhere, right? So they know that. All right, they're gonna get American approval, Euro European Union approval. Um, all of them. So, uh, bang, Cardano hodlers, bang. Don't be afraid to accumulate more of that. Oh, yeah, that's going a long, long way. All right, let's move on. Bang, Bitcoin Exchange, founded by billionaire Sam Bankman Fried, acquires a CTF license. So, CFTC license. So, CFTC is the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. Uh, you know, Big Brains, Big Brains Gensler. Yeah, he used to run the CFTC. He used to be the chairman of the CFTC. And that's why we love Big Brains. He's run big big things like this before, right? And if you're new to this channel, Gary Gensler, that's our SEC chairman, right? So he was also the chairman under Obama of the CFTC, this thing that we're about to read about right now. So he's a master. Well, not only is he a master of, of, running, of running agencies, but he used to teach blockchain at MIT. Oh. Master. You know what I'm saying? Master. All right, but we're, we're talking about CFTC right now. And so, um, <clears throat> and so this is amazing. Uh, a Bitcoin exchange gets a, a CFTC license. So, you know, like I've told you before, like the thing that's stopping the hedge funds and the big boys to come is that they don't have licensed regulated exchanges to buy this stuff on. I've told you this a million times. They're not allowed to buy from BitMEX. They're not allowed to put their clients' money on BitMEX, Bitstamp, BitHum, all that bullshit. They're not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you get your, you'd, that'd be it for your hedge fund, right? Um, if you get caught. which they would, so they don't do it, right? So, but here's a licensed one. And uh, so this one may be good to go. Let's read about it. Let's check it out. Thank you, Binium, for this story. So FTX US, the American affiliate of billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried's global cryptocurrency exchange, FTX International, is betting that it can leverage a similar playbook to its parent company and successfully compete in the ever-crowded U.S. market. Specifically, it is going to start offering crypto derivatives to clients. Ah, derivatives, okay. Announced today, 
the one-year-old exchange has agreed to acquire the parent company of Ledger X, LLC, um, a Commodities and Futures Trading Association regulated crypto derivatives exchange. Oh, so they bought a regulated crypto exchange. Okay. For an undisclosed sum. Derivatives are financial instruments such as futures whose prices is based on the value of the underlying asset. I've talked to you about that before. Ledger currently offers futures, options, and swaps on Bitcoin and Ether. Oh, lots of investment vehicles right there. Nice. If the deal closes, which could happen as early as October, FTX US will be able to offer US clients a distinct product line from industry heavyweights such as Coinbase, Kraken, or Gemini. We want to plag our we want to plant our flag in something that is uniquely ours, says Brett Harrison, CEO of FTX US. Going into the derivatives market is such a natural extension. FTX International has two years of running an exchange with five hundred billion monthly volume in derivatives without seeing serious liquidations or having nearly any downtime. It feels like this is clearly within our wheelhouse. Uh, it is fortunate that FTX US has this playbook to draw on as it is still looking to make a major impact in the ever competitive and crowded American crypto spot market. The exchange is growing fast. Harrison said that in January 2021, it averaged a million dollars worth of spot volume per day. Yet over the last 24 hours, that number has risen to over 350 million. What? That's great. Wait, hold on. Let me just read that again. January 2021, it averaged a million dollars a day. Yet in the past 24 hours, they have over 350. Holy shit. So these guys have been growing massively. So according to Coin, oh, according to CoinGecko. So still, this is a small fraction of the daily volume seen by Coinbase, 4.6 billion, and Kraken, 1.2 billion, or Binance, US, 1 billion. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Those are the numbers. <laughs> but still, that's a major growth. But yes, obviously, way smaller than those other guys. Binance US is the American franchise of Binance.com, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. These numbers do, do not also take into account the rapid growth in crypto trading volume seen by PayPal, Square, and Robinhood in recent months. The market for regulated derivatives in the US, the US is much less crowded. The major player is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, CME, which currently has 1.6 billion of open interest, unsettled contracts, in Bitcoin futures. It also offers Ether futures and Bitcoin options. However, if we remove the US geofence, the market becomes much denser and competitive. FTX International is the third largest derivative exchange in the world with 2.3 billion, but it is still far behind Binance, 4.15 billion. Uh, all right, Ledger X does not factor into the top 10. CME is, all right, all right, come on, man, come on, man, let's go. All right, so here's the top 10 Bitcoin ex, uh, futures contract things. Well, these are unregulated exchanges here. Well, the CME right here is regulated. So that's the one regulated exchange. All the rest of these fuck sticks, it doesn't matter. Uh, institutions can't come use those. So, all right. So even the less competitive U.S. derivative space, FTX U.S., will have some catching up to do. The question then becomes, who will be doing the trading? Which is important because crypto derivatives products have been scapegoated by some in the industry for accentuating market movements and causing rapid price downfalls. <laughs> Harrison says that the customer bases between FTX US and Ledger X share similar profiles, 70% institutional, 30% retail, suggesting that institutionals such as hedge funds and proprietary trading firms will be the ones primarily purchasing these products. So. They're, they're figuring this is going to be for big money, not for uh, retailers. Whereas BitMEX, you know, it's fucking all retailers, right? Um, and let me get a sip. Hold on. <laughs> That's funny. Well, not that funny, but what was funny is that they said that up here where they said that 
crypto derivatives has been uh, scapegoated. <laughs> All right, whatever, man. Just let's move on. Harrison says that the customer bases between FTX US and LedgerX share similar profiles. All right. Uh, suggesting that institutions such as hedge funds and proprietary trading firms will be the ones primarily purchasing these products. However, LedgerX specifically targets the retail industry with some of its offerings, such as small contracts, like its Bitcoin Mini, worth 0 0.01 of a Bitcoin, about 469 bucks right now, and educational videos designed to help retail investors get started with these products. Sock your mom and dad to get started. When asked about the value and need for such products, given the already volatile nature of crypto, Harrison pointed out that contrary to some negative opinions, derivatives, crypto or otherwise, are an efficient and necessary tool for healthy markets. They are much more efficient means of trading when your two parties are interested in having financial exposure to a particular asset, but aren't so interested in necessarily holding that asset or at least holding that asset immediately. Exactly, you guys know I'm a Forex trader. Uh, if you're new to this channel, I'm a professional Forex trader. I don't have a nine to five job. Now, I, I've been trading Forex for 21 years. Yeah, look at me, look at my face, look at me, look at the hair. Why, you think I have a job? <laughs> yeah, no, I my money makes me money, right? And that's how it makes me the money is that I trade currency derivatives. So a derivative is an is a asset well, is an investment vehicle that tracks the the price of an underlying asset. And so when I buy, I don't know, Japanese yen against the Australian dollar, I buy the, the Japanese yen versus the dollar, but I buy the derivative of it, which tracks the um, exchange rate of that. Yeah. And so when that goes up or down, my trade goes up or down. And so... Like what this thing said right here, you don't have to own the shit, right? I've never owned a yen. I, I've been trading for 21 years. I've made a lot, a lot of money from the Japanese yen, hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years, maybe even millions. Yeah, I've never owned one yen in my life, right? So it makes it easy. Derivatives make things easy in that I want to make the money off the move of the asset, but I don't want to own that asset, right? It's like a, a gold derivative. Yeah, I want to make the money off of the price of gold going up and down. I don't want fucking bricks of gold in my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? You know what I'm saying? But I want to make the money off the price move. The price action, right? Ah, so that's what they said right there. And that's what he's saying. It's a more efficient way. Because uh, you don't, you know, interest. if you're interested in it, you know, you don't have to hold that asset. Right? I don't hold fucking stacks of Euro, uh, of euros and pesos and 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 russian rubles and turkish liras and stuff in my house no i just trade it in a derivative format and well i just get you know just get paid when i make a good trade right but i don't have to own it and that's what i keep telling you guys about right people don't want to necessarily own bitcoin yeah they want to have bitcoin they don't want to do that they don't want to custody that shit they don't want to own it just want to make money off the price action of it. All right, fuck owning it. Um, anyways. Uh, so he also noted that this is especially valuable in crypto, where many people remain apprehensive about individually securing these assets. This sentiment was also shared by Sam Bankman-Fried in recent interviews with Forbes. How much longer? Okay. Harrison also explained that while the company has future plans to merge the two operation and product offerings, it will be conscientious regarding specific customers that can trade these products. He wants to convey a degree of seriousness with the platform and not promote a gamified experience. It is important to make it clear from the beginning that this is a trading platform. It's not a game with which to risk everything. Right, like BitMEX, BitHum, all those guys that offer their, their little crypto. That's how they make it seem, right? Soccer mom and dad, hey, come. Ha ha. Yeah, just put money in me. 
Yeah, they make it like a game, like a video game, right? Which it is not. Futures contracts are no fucking joke uh, at all. And so that's what he says. He wants to make this serious. He wants there to be a level. Where did he say that? He wants to convey a level of seriousness. He wants to show soccer mom and dad. This ain't no fucking joke. If you don't know what you're doing, don't fucking come here. Whereas BitMEX and those guys, they tell soccer mom and dad, oh, it's easy. Just come on in. Put your money in. Don't worry. It's easy. Yeah, it's not easy, you motherfuckers. And the, 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 the Bitcoin moves up and down so volatile. The volatility level is so huge. Yeah, soccer moms and dads get wiped out. So these guys are saying, look, we want a degree of seriousness. Uh, and it's not gamified. In other words, we're not going to lie to people and tell them, like, look, yeah, it's just easy. It's just easy. Uh, we're going to tell them the truth. And unless you know what you're doing, don't fucking come here because you'll probably get wiped out. <laughs> wow. Thrashed. At least a thrashing. <laughs> so look, you might not lose your whole head, but you might lose an arm or a leg. So look, it's important to make it clear from the beginning that this is a trading platform. It's not a game with which to risk everything. And that's not our goal. We want people to trade safely and responsibly. And that, nice, nice, exactly. They're not in it just for the money. It's easy to rip off soccer mom or dad. They don't know any better. You tell them, yeah, don't worry about it. Just throw your money in, just make a trade. You'll, you'll, you'll do good. Yeah, and then you'll wipe them out, right? These guys are not trying to do that. They're trying to get them to trade responsibly. So look. Bitcoin exchange final billionaire, Bankman Sam Freed, blah, 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 acquires, bang, CTF license. Nice. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's a real exchange. All right, let's move on. Bang. Belarus. Oh, okay. Fuck. So, our brother here. Wow. wow not brother. He's not a brother, Dagon. I should say this motherfucker here. Belarus president, motherfucker Lukashenko, calls on state to mine cryptocurrency. <laughs> bang. What have I told you on this channel? Many times. If I was a dictator, what would I do? Yeah, I'd fucking make it mandatory. Every citizen is mining this shit. Not only the citizens, but us, the state, we're going to mine it. Like, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Every power plant. <laughs> Y'all, come on. Are you joking? And so this guy, and I've told you about Lukashenko. He's a motherfucker. Uh, you know, he's a dictator, killing asshole, but... But, um... But, I mean, he's doing the right thing with Bitcoin right here, right? All right, with crypto. Like I told you, it's like Hitler, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to bring regulatory clarity. You fucking hate Hitler. You want him dead, but fuck. Good idea, Hitler. Do that, right? And that's what this guy Lukashenko is. He's like a, a Hitler, but who gets crypto. <laughs> you know, he gets it. He gets it. So you got to give him that at least props. He doesn't get bangs, but he gets props. You know, I'll, I'll just say that. All right, so let's just read it. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko has called on the government to mine crypto using its spare power infrastructure. Exactly. You got all this energy. You got spare energy. Uh, well, let's use that surplus energy and mine crypto with it, right? Duh. Lukashenko spoke at the opening of the Perilovsky mining and processing plant on August 27th, urging workers to move into crypto mining in Belarus instead of pursuing low-paying, okay, so we read that, low-paying farming positions abroad, Russian news agency said. So the president said that Belarus has enough electricity resources to power cryptocurrency mining, pointing to abandoned industrial sites that would be used to generate revenue, Lukashenko stated. We must understand they are not waiting for us anywhere. Build something based on electricity. After all, start mining cryptocurrencies or whatever it's called. There's enough electricity in the country. All right, so he's telling everybody. But wait, we already read some shit like this. I want to hear, they said he's telling the government to do it. The Petrolovsky plant is officially the largest investment project of state-owned Belaruskali, one of the world's biggest producers of potash fertilizers reportedly accounting for 20% of global supply. Holy shit. All right, so that's how Belarus has that money, 20% of potash supplies of the world uh, as, of 2020, uh, as of 2019. So the sole Belarusian potash exporter, Belarus Galley, 
was sanctioned by the U.S. United States government in mid-August, among other punitive measures against President Lukashenko. Yeah, well, Lukashenko's a dictator, motherfucker, so yeah, we're sanctioning and doing stuff to him. Lukashenko's latest call for crypto mining follows multiple efforts of the Belarusian government to move into the growing cryptocurrency mining industry. In February, the Ministry of Energy of the Republic of Belarus said it was investigating the risks and benefits of crypto mining for a potential move into the sector. So here we go. Here's the government stuff. Bang. So all that other stuff I just read to you the other day. But bang. Uh, in April 2019, Lukashenko proposed to deploy excess energy from the country's first nuclear power plant to mine cryptocurrencies and sell them. Bang. Exactly. So, so now, so we did read the other day about when he told the citizens to mine it, and which that just repeated, but now... He wants the actual government to mine the crypto, right? And so through power plants, right? And so uh, smart move, smart move. I mean, of course, you have excess capacity, uh, surplus energy, uh, put it to work, right? Why not? All right, let's move on. Let's get to the shout outs. But what we got here, James Wilson followed me, cryptocurrency investor and trader in L.A., Live with you with the bye. Good for you. Aklia followed me. All right, Aklia. Live with you with the bang. Bitcoin Kong. Oh, what's he talking about here? Oh, you know what Kong do. Look, look, Bitcoin Kong. <laughs> Live with you with the bang. Look, look, Miss Grants. You two fuck sticks. <laughs> Greatest show in the multiverse. Oh, he even paused it there. In the multiverse. He put some style on it. You dig on right? Bitcoin Kong, greatest of the multiverse. Bang, bang, you tell them. Look, look. We're in our scopes, baby. We getting this crypto. Bang, bang. All right. All right. Bang. All right. Let's see where everyone is here. Boom. What we got here? Web zombie. All right. Zombies. All plural. So it's a, a horde of these zombies. All right. Everything's zombies. Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, Black Ops 3, Custom Zombies, Easter Eggs, Glitches, join our Discord. All right. Zombie crew, lover brother, see brother. Brothers, bye. Plural. Wasper. What? One DeLorean. All right. Lover brother, see brother. Bye. Andrew Chetty, the Enforcer. Look, look, what you trying to sell there, fuckstack? I'm trying to sell my crypto, Andrew. Bang! Settle down. The juice is worth a squeeze. Huddle. Hey, <laughs> you tell him, Andrew. Lever with the sea brother. Bye. Banks. Lever with the sea brother. Bye. Wesley. Lever with the sea brother. Bang. Haven't seen you for a few weeks. All right. Technically bullish. Lever with the sea brother. Bye. Andrew Chater been with us so long. Look, look, his pictures in black and white. That's how long he's huddled. So listen to him and huddle. Lever with the sea brother. Bang. Binium. Lever with the Zebra. The Bang. King Drac. Crypto is my passion and inspiration. Donations. Wan Chain. Oh, Wan Chain. That's from the story last night. He loved the Wan Chain talk. All right. Lever with the Zebra. The Bang. Oh, this son of a bitch right here. Go, go. Bang. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> Bang. Got you wrong. Hey. Once again. Son of a bitch. Boop. Lever with the sea brother. No one save you. Bye. All right. Grinchable, Grinchable. Lever with the sea brother. Bye. And Radster holding down the insurgency in Eastern Europe in Prague. Lever with the sea brother. Bye. All right. Anything else? Wasper. Oh, what's this? I am Q saying. What? I am, uh. Kibjavid? I don't know what that means. Look, first of all, truly and proudly Indian. I am joy lover. I like adventure and hangouts with friends. I am a regular traveler, and I love to exploring the world. All right, brother, explore the world, get that money, and you'll have more money to explore it greatly. Love it, see, brother. Bye. Look, look, there's the assassin. Sunny bee, spy lady. Love you, lady, see you, lady. The assassin. Bye. Edwin, the original. Love the chief brother. Bye. Oh, Edwin. So fuck, man. The fucking floods. Holy shit. So that hurricane thing. 
that that was here the other day, Ida or Ira, whatever his name was. I think it was called Ida, wasn't it? Um, fuck, it went all the way up to Northeast. Yo, New York City. Well, New York State and New Jersey last night got wiped out. Everybody's home is flooded. Everybody's home is flooded. And so, Edwin, damn, brother. I hope I hope shit uh, is not bad for you. Um, keep us posted in the uh, private chat. All right, love of the sea, brother. Bye. And then, Universal Wizard Throw, holding down the insurgency in Central Europe. Love of the sea, brother. Bye. Well, that's everybody right there. Anyone else? Anyone else? Oh, uh, nope. That's the usual band of miscreants right there. That's you. Oh, Zane followed me. All right, Zane. Love with the team with the bang. All right, that's enough. Let's get to the Death Star. Bang. Yeah. So look, look. We had a great show for you today. Naturally. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. All right, guys. Seriously, though. Now we had a great show today. Uh, let's check it out. Bang. Story number one. Cardano is a fave amongst retailers and institutions, and that is no surprise. That is no surprise. I mean, uh, retailers is one thing, but being a favorite among institutions, that's understandable, especially when they just got approval from Japan. Like I've told you, it's the hardest place. So it, I mean, I'm not going to say the world. It might be the world, actually. I mean, it, it's. I'm not sure that... Like, I am actually trying to think of somewhere harder, but I can't. But anyway, it's one of the hardest places in the world to get approved. And uh, Cardano's been approved in Japan. And so, uh, great. And also, uh, they've got their new, um, what's that called? The smart contract thing coming out. A new functionality. And I will see. They want to compete against Ethereum and all the rest of the other ones with smart contracts. And so we'll see how it goes. Um, as you can see by the price movement, yeah, it's favorable. Ever since that Japanese ruling, ever since the Japanese uh, uh, approval uh, was about a week and a half ago, Cardano's been rip roaring, rip roaring. It's under over three bucks, isn't it? Hold on, let me look. Three dollars and four cents, right? Yeah. So, uh, great stuff for Cardano. Great stuff for Cardano holders. Bang. Uh, and we'll just see where we go from here. You know what I mean? We'll see where we go from here. All right. Uh, Cardano holders. Bang. And then next story was FTX US Crypto Exchange gets CFTC license. So that's interesting. So these guys are going to be offering licensed, regulated. Uh, Remember the word regulated. When I, whenever you hear me say the word regulated, that means big money can come get it legally, right? <laughs> legally. And so, uh, yeah, there it is. They got a CFTC license even. I mean, dang on. I mean, so amazing. Um, and they're going to offer derivatives contracts on crypto. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, like me, I'm a derivatives trader. I trade currencies. Euros, Japanese yen, British pounds, oh, uh, South African rands, uh, whatever, New Zealand dollars and stuff. But I don't own it, right? I don't own. I don't have stacks of fucking yen in my house. But I make the money off the price movement of the yen, and that's what these guys are going to offer: are derivatives contracts, which will allow people to make money off the price action of the underlying asset, right? So here's the asset, and here's the derivatives contract. Yeah, as the asset goes up, the contract goes up. The asset goes down, the contract goes down. Right? But you don't have to own it. So you don't have to custody it and all this, which makes it easier for hedge funds. You know, if a hedge fund has to custody their own crap, well, now you got to, you know, there's probably a whole, whole bunch of regulations and stuff around that, you know, because it's your client's money, right? So you're probably going to have to have, like, you know, a dedicated this and dedicated that and all this and all that, right? Whereas when you buy things through futures contracts, well, you don't need to custody it. Right, I don't like I just said. I don't own any British pounds. I've never owned a British pound in my life. I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars off the British pound in my 21 years of investing, though, and that's what this is. That's the beauty of derivatives contract, and this is a licensed, and that's what's beauty about this. 
This is a licensed one, licensed by the CFTC itself. So hedge fund masters and all them can come and get this. Look, look, bang, bang, bang. And then finally, <laughs> Belarus calls on state to mine crypto. And so you guys know this fuck stick Lukashenko. We talked about him the other day. I'm not going to get into him again. He's a miscreant, but uh, he's doing, um, you know, what a dictator should do, man. Get your place cryptoed up, man, day. <laughs> all right. Get your, your place cryptoed up. Yeah, mine it, sell it, all of it, you know, like. So the other day we read to you about uh, Lukashenko telling the citizens to mine it. Now he's saying he wants the state's um, energy, you know, uh, power stations to mine it. Right? Of course. Why wouldn't you? You have excess power, uh, surplus power. Well, put that power to good use. Don't let it just go to waste. Put it to good use mining some crypto. And so... The guy's an asshole. He's a bastard. He's a fuckstick. But this one idea, genius. I mean, I don't understand, like, the king of Jordan. I don't understand why he doesn't do something like this. I mean, you're the king. You run the place. Crypto up, son. Crypto up. So, uh, good for you guys in Belarus. Uh, Not so much good for having that president, but, well... Sometimes you got to take the chicken with the feathers. (laughs) You got the bad... You got the bad president, so that's the feathers. But dang on, he's going to give you that dang on crypto. And that's straight chicken. So on that note, let's chill it and kill it. Bye! Let's get you back to your wives and lives. So subscribe below, press the bell. You get not Mac notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. Look, look. In the multiverse. Look, my name is Shamar Clark. I love talking money. Bang! love talking crypto. Bang! This is the favorite time of my day. So thank you for having me in your home, and I'll see you tomorrow for another fun fact, fact-filled day of crypto talk. Until then, subscribe here and press the bell. Bang! Watch that video there. Bang. Greatest of the multiverse. And I'll see you all tomorrow. My name is Shamar Clark. Always watching our money. And more importantly, I'm always on duty. Bang. Yes. See you tomorrow. Over and out.